Hi, welcome. It's Claire here and I send the greetings um, from the rest of the SCBA team. And I was just looking at my background and laughing because I was thinking, well, I've got some books on show, so that's good, isn't it? I've got a bit of artwork. And you might be thinking, well, there's a, a plant that's missing, Claire. Surely you should have some flowers or something. And then I move like this. And you see that I have a spider plant. Um, any of you want any spider plants, let me know. It's produced quite a few um, babies. And so I am very happily give those away to anyone that wants one. But anyway, enough about my background. And on to um, something that God placed into my heart the other evening. It was a story, really, that... Um, some of you might have heard, I don't know, but one that I want to share with you again. Um... When I was 30, me and a mate, a couple of mates, um, decided to do a bike ride. And the bike ride went from the south of Spain all the way up to the north of Spain, so Seville to Santiago. And it's a well-known pilgrimage route. It's like a, a Camino. And um, we did it on our bikes. And so it was 623 or 24 miles um, in total, but who's counting? And uh, we did it over, I think it was 11 or 12 days. And uh, what I wanted to tell you though, was that um, when we first started out, there was me and my mates, and seriously, I mean, if I find some photos, I'll, I'll share them with you. We had our bikes and mine was like, I bought from the auction and uh, we had flowers, these velvet flowers wrapped around it. We'd go and hang our washing off the back of our bikes so we'd be cycling along like main roads of our, you know, tops um, blowing in the breeze kind of thing. And we had such a laugh um, on our ride and it was, great great fun so we took i would say quite a laid back approach to the whole cycling adventure well i thought we were laid back until um i came across a couple of spanish gentlemen called uh paco and oh i can't remember the second guy's name but anyway they had just retired and they wanted to do this pilgrimage and they were catholic so it was really um took on a sort of a very significant meaning for them and I can remember one day, um, we were all obviously going off at different times, different speeds. We weren't cycling together, so we, you know, didn't see each other every day, but we would occasionally bump into them. But I can remember passing them, it was at lunchtime, and they were under the trees with a full-on feast at this restaurant, you know, with uh, crefts of wine and, uh, and yeah, lots and lots of tapas, and having a great kind of time. So... They were even more laid back than us. And then there was this group of German guys, and I don't want to be stereotypical or anything, but um, they were really kind of, they had all the gear. They had um, these really fancy mountain bikes. They were carrying very light kind of gear and everything like that, not like us. We'd have like baguettes strapped to the back of our panniers or something. Anyway, these guys, they would be the first ones out of the dormitories um, each day. And they would just cycle really, really hard. And, um, but the story, the point of this story is, we all arrived at Santiago on the same day. So we had three very different um, experiences, different sets of skills, um, different approaches, but we all got to our destination on the same day. And I think the reason why God kind of reminded me of this story is because each of you are in such different contexts. You've got different churches, you're serving different communities. So I just don't want you to be comparing your race with another person's because God has got something very unique and special for you. And obviously, hopefully that will remind you of the passage in Hebrews where it says this, it's Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily entangles or hinders our progress. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. You need to only run the race that God has set before you. So take the time to ask, what is God requiring of you right now? And it might be different from what he's asking of somebody else. 
And we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. The author and perfecter of our faith, the pioneer of our faith. We need to keep our eyes on him. So what is it that God's asking of you? And us as a team, we are cheering you on. And if there comes a moment where you need someone to run alongside you, then please reach out, ask us. We're happy to be sounding boards. We're obviously praying for you. And we want you to complete your race because we want everybody to make it to the end. So that's my story and that's my thought. And I just pray that God will bless you this week as you meet the people in your church, in your communities, whether that's over Zoom or a socially distanced cuppa. May you know that he is at work in and through you. And may you know the peace that surpasses all understanding.